इसी बात की डिमांड ज्यादा होती है और सप्लाई कम होता है तो प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट होता है तो ये वैक्सीन वाली कंपनी एक के बजाय दस लोगों को लाइसेंस दे और रॉयल्टी भी ले अगस्त और दिसंबर के बीच में 216 करोड़ अगर हम इस सीन को देखें तो डोजेज भारत में निर्मित हाउ मच स्पुटनिक वैक्सीन इज इंडिया गेटिंग इंडिया इज गेटिंग टोटल ऑफ 125 मिलियन पीपल डोजेज और 250 मिलियन वैक्सीन ओवर द नेक्स्ट एट टू ट्वेल्व मंथ watching news epicenter with me maria shakil ever since the phase 3 vaccination drive began which included vaccinating just about every adult in the country the entire vaccination drive has slowed down several states have already stopped this entire drive because there is vaccine shortage just look at these statistics in the first 17 days of this month daily shots averaged 1.73 million which is down from nearly 3 million in april and this disruption is because of vaccine shortage that certainly is a matter of huge concern we have shown you on this show how the medical infrastructure is practically non existent and the test track and treat mantra falls flat on its face in the heartland of the country beyond the standard covid protocols one sure shot defense to protect ourselves from the virus is the vaccine life saving drugs created here and sent to other parts of the world to tackle the surge india has two of its own vaccines indigenous vaccines the center has been highlighting that there is an ambitious plan of uh, ensuring that uh, there are 200 crore doses that are available by the end of the year that number will ensure that every adult in the country will receive the jab however what phase 3 has shown us is that supply side problems persist there are not enough vaccines to go around the center state distribution and procurement model has too many roadblocks there is a significant urban rural divide when it comes to the roll out of the vaccine and capacity building remains a work in progress as a handful of firms can't possibly create enough jabs to inoculate the entire country the threat of the mutant variants and the third wave looms large across the country and the vaccination drive has to be expanded and streamlined to give the entire nation this critical defense so how can india ensure vaccines for all joining me first on the show is biocon chief kiran majumdar shaw ma'am thank you so much for your time the government of india has liberalized the entire vaccination regime for production of vaccines uh, but yet with the exception of 12 options that have come in seven for sputnik and five for covaxin there haven't been much interest why do you think this is the case is it because um, of the entire process being very complex or is it because people do not really want to get into this it is a very critical sphere where um, you know because of life issues involved i think it's basically to do with the time to basically develop and scale up any vaccine program uh, even if it is an already uh, developed vaccine because tech transfer and the whole process of making a vaccine is quite a complex uh, process and a time consuming one because i don't think people understand the regulatory requirements Mr. Shaw, then what will you say that all those demands that have come in from several quarters recently that there should be technology transfer? Is it that easy that the technology transfer can have uh, you know overnight and perhaps the entire uh, scale up of the manufacturing and the production of vaccine can happen in a matter of weeks? Obviously, that can't happen. But in principle, I think it is a good idea. to try and scale up by having more capacity built through larger number of companies so for instance if you look at it when sputnik came into the country and licensed uh, its commercial interests to dr reddy's 
Dr. Reddy's did not have in-house capabilities to develop the vaccine. And therefore, they put out a letter of interest to several companies who could help them to scale this up. And therefore, a large number of companies evinced interest and many of them actually have offered to you know, do various parts of vaccine development. So there are two basic parts. One is developing the bulk vaccine and the other is a fill and finish of the vaccine into a vial. And whilst we have a large number of yes. sterile uh, filling facilities in the country which can do uh, this uh, vialing of vaccines, uh, very few companies actually have the uh, the skills, capabilities, and the infrastructure with which to make bulk vaccines. And I think that's where we really need to focus and see how we get this scale up done by a larger number of companies participating. So <laughs> I really break it up into two hmm. sections. Uh, Ms. Shaw, look at what co-vaccine promoter Dr. Krishna Ella has said that uh, you know, to quote him that onboarding any vaccine manufacturer is a long drawn process and it takes six to eight months. And for and also there's a lot of reluctance and uh, people are not very keen. Not all uh, biotech firms are keen into getting into vaccine uh, manufacturing space because it involves handling live viruses and very few have the capability of dealing with it. In such a scenario, what can be done to ramp up production? He's absolutely right, because his process is a very delicate process. It's a very complex process, and it is a process that requires very specialized equipment. So having a BSL-3 facility is the starting point, and not too many facilities in the countries have a BSL-3 uh, you know, facility. So I think the COVAXIN uh, program is not that easy to uh, you know, scale up in, at, in a short time. He's absolutely right. The only question I want to ask is that there are various government facilities which ought to have been basically developed and invested in from last year. Why are we looking at Hafkin and Indian Immunologicals at such a late stage? Equally, there is a very, very large unutilized facilities in Chennai called HLL, which actually should have been uh, you know, invested and operationalized by this time. But I think we are looking at all these opportunities far too late in the day. Anyway, I think it's always better late than never. And all these facilities do need to be basically, uh, you know, uh, refurbished, scaled up, invested in, because all of them can actually play a very, very significant role going forward. Ma'am, last question to you. Uh, we are seeing this roadmap that has been drafted by the government to really scale up production. Uh, you know, they have come up with a plan of specific amount that will be available by August, December 2021. Uh, how do you see this entire vaccination uh, scaling up, pan out in the next few months? So the way I would look at it is we should really start ensuring that every single dose that we have available to us today ought to be jabbed into someone's arm. It should not be lying in warehouses. There shouldn't be a delay in deploying vaccines. And I would like to see some kind of effort to make sure that the logistics is made efficient enough to ensure that the time between a vial leaving the warehouse of a vaccine manufacturing facility and getting into a vaccination site and into the arm of a person should not be more than 72 hours. If we can have such very, very, you know, uh, uh, you know, optimistic and very aggressive, uh, you know, metrics of measuring such logistics, I think that would stand us in good stead. We really need to vaccinate fast and vast. So I think that's the way we have to look at it. Moreover, I also want to comment that at a time when we have vaccine inadequacy, yes. we should look at strategy, not equity all the time, because we have to stop transmission. We have to keep people safe and we have to make sure that we stop the spread. 
and most of the spread is happening from urban centers into the hinterland so we have to stop that spread all right Kiran, Kiran Majumdar Shah, always a pleasure to speak to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time. Let me bring in other guests on the show. Dr. Y.K. Gupta, he is a member of National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19. We have Guru Prakash, spokesperson of the BJP, and also Dr. Joy Kumar, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Let me get our first comments from the politicians on the show. Guru Prakash, yes, the center has drafted a roadmap as to what it will be in the month of August, December. But don't you think it's coming too late? The fact is that the vaccination drive, particularly for the adults, the group that began, uh, the vaccination for whom began on first, first of May onwards, has actually stopped in states across the country. Uh, Maria Ji, there is no denying the fact that uh, this crisis is an unprecedented crisis, once in a century pandemic, and we have to have a historical background as well. I would like to take you to the past. The hepatitis B vaccine, it was commercially available in 1982. India launched it in 2002. The same is true for polio vaccine as well. But as far as the COVID vaccine is concerned, let me tell you and your viewers as well, that Prime Minister Modi set up a task force of experts in April 2020 and personally monitored. And we all saw the visuals as well when he was personally visiting the vaccination manufacturing centers as well. So the Prime Minister, the central government, the health minister are personally monitoring and are closely watching all the development. We are all aware of the fact that India is the fastest country to reach the figure of 18 crore, more than 18 crore today, more than 18.5 crore. So these challenges yes. are unprecedented, but we are prepared. The distribution roadmap, which you're talking about, of 216 crore vaccination is very no, much but visible. Can we, as, can we as a country really afford this, that uh, the population which has been made eligible for vaccination is not getting the jab only because there is vaccine shortage? I'm being very realistic. There is somebody who has to be held accountable for this. I'm... Exactly. You see, I am being very responsible and realistic with you. Initially, we set up a target of vaccinating mm. around 30 crore of our population till August of this year. We have already reached the figure about to reach 19 crore. So that uh, target looks very much achievable. I am hopeful. We are positive. The distribution roadmap is ready. And uh, we have already seen Covaxin, Covishield, Sputnik V, and there are many vaccines. By the end of July, okay. you would see two extra yes. vaccines, one by Zadis Cadilla. Yes, and Dr. Y.K. Gupta will be able to explain all the vaccine candidates uh, to us in just a bit. Uh, Dr. Joy Kumar, here is the <clears throat> BJP saying that, yes, that's the reason why the entire vaccination drive was going in a particular pace. That first, the... Uh, frontline workers and healthcare workers will be vaccinated because they need vaccines first. They need the shield first. This then the vulnerable category of 45 plus and 60 plus, rightly so. It is the opposition, and particularly Ahmadmi Party, other opposition rule states that came up with the demand: vaccinate one and all, scale up the vaccination. You were part of all the consultations. Couldn't you have realized that? Technology transfer that all of you keep on talking about cannot happen overnight. And even if it happens, the entire process takes months to finally, you know, translate into that entire system of transfer, then production, and then distribution. So, uh, Maria, very uh, lots of uh, questions. So, give me some time. I'll answer one and uh, each one of them. First of all. Uh, my esteemed colleague from the BJP says that we were the fastest in the world and you keep hearing this. The fact is that you have done only 30, you targeted 30 crores, which is 30 crore jabs. That means out of the 200 crore jabs you need to put, you will only do 30 crores by August. Right? That means 15% of the target of 200, crore, uh, 200 jabs. Because please identify between, you need two shots to vaccinate yourself. So this is the performance of government of India. Second thing, Maria, I heard uh, Kiran Majumdar Shah before this, and she rightly said it takes five to six months. When did this virus uh, first come into the Indian uh, uh, scenario? When did the Prime Minister start hopping on the flights and saying, I'm doing Atman Nirbhar Bharat uh, and everything else? It happened last year. You didn't have five, six months to develop the facilities of bi uh, BSL, uh, BS, uh, Biosafety Level 3. 
See, the whole thing is when we keep talking in this funny, uh, scientific, you know, ways and protecting this government. The fact is that this Bi Bharat Biotech was de uh, developing it with ICMR. Now, uh, the CEO of Bio, uh, Bharat Biotech has the audacity to say that it takes a long time. The BSL-3 labs are adequate in India. There are lots of companies who are doing it, lots of facilities who are doing it. And the virus came, so you should have, last year you could have done it. The other thing which you can't forgive Mr. Modi and this government is you gave the first time the order for the vaccine in January. Now you tell me every other uh, government across the world invested. So when, when Americans are investing $12 billion in their pharma, uh, pharma infrastructure and companies, we were, you know, uh, banging plates and asking to switch off lights and throw petals. China also invested in companies in the uh, uh, companies, uh, AstraZeneca, by the way. The Britishers invested in different companies, but we were banging plates. And oh, by the way, we done a great job. Okay, so BSL. Vaccination to 18 to 45. Who says? The question again is you must vaccinate the vulnerable people. Accept it. But under 18 and 45 getting also, aren't the people who are dying and getting seriously ill between 18 to 45? Are the people who don't get vaccinated, are the other people, they're not going to spread the disease? So the question again is, we said you vaccinate everybody. The problem is if you have adequate vaccine and you prepare. You don't bring vaccination. You give the order in Jan and then you give the order in April. And by the way, Mr. Guru Prakash is saying that, oh, by the Prime Minister, so hard working, so many task forces. This task force met okay. between January to April, not okay. even I March. am going to get no, a reaction one from one Guru one in one just one a bit. One, but before that, that, now YK no, Gupta, second. please. This, this, Dr. This, Gupta, no, but I'm second, coming Maria. back to both of you because we have a doctor on the panel. And he will but put yeah, the real uh, story question, in, in, in light for, uh, for the viewers. Okay, I'm coming okay. back to you. Yeah, go ahead. Ajoy, okay. I'm coming back to you. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right, uh, Dr. It, Gupta, okay. here are the questions that are being raised <laughs> and also what uh, Kiran Majumdar Shaw said, that you have to really scale up fast and vast. Uh, that's the key in the next I, few weeks and months. The government says that they have a roadmap ready. They have certain other plans as well. And the, all this discussion is happening on a day that uh, your recommendations have been accepted by the health ministry, that uh, there has to be a gap of three months if after the first dose an individual is tested positive, until the time he's tested negative, and after that he can take the jab, the second jab. The larger perception that is getting built, uh, Dr. Gupta, is that all this gap between doses, uh, you know, that protocol that came out today and in the past also, is because there's vaccine shortage that you're changing the policy based on the availability of vaccines? I think I would say that uh, this is not based on the shortage. This is based on the data. This is science-based. And what? And this is a dynamic state. Initially, it was uh, six to eight weeks, and the time was increased to 12 to 16 weeks because it was seen that the titer which is seen is much better after 12 weeks and the protection which we can see is much better after 12 weeks you may say that why the uk has rolled back when india has get, gone into 12 weeks to 16 weeks recommendation 12 weeks recommendation that uk has gone back to eight weeks the reason is different is hmm. not is the reason is that they found that the larger cluster has been a variant which is possibly from Indian origin, what they say, but I'm not concerning with that, is a variant and it is a small country and in their management skill, they thought that it will be good that as fast as possible, this can be done. And that's why this is eight weeks. Now, I would continue with what Kiran has said, I would say rather vast and fast. India is such a vast country hmm. and therefore government is making all effort to make the vaccine available as fast as possible. The technology transfer which Kiran has okay. said is not uh, a switch on and off phenomena. It takes some time. However, hmm. The institution, the organization which have volunteered or which have been roped in have been given grant, not a loan. That means government has put funding into that. And these organizations, whether Hopkins, whether whether BibCall, whether Institute of Immunology, 
these are the institution which have a prima facie some expertise some background and therefore bsl3 level development will some take some time but it will not take longer time there is some degree of expertise dr, of dr. gupta i also want to understand one thing that the central government took this call and of course all of you were involved in this decision making that all those vaccines which have got the approval from who and other uh, drug controllers in several parts of India or uh, you several parts of uh, other countries say in US or UK uh, will be given emergency use authorization in India. Uh, there have been reach out to Moderna, Pfizer and others. Why is it that most of these vaccines are still to arrive in India? I would say this, this is the regulatory process will take some time and this also depends on those companies who, who are interested in coming in and also remember that these vaccine pfizer moderna have to be stored in a temperature which is much lower i'm not going to a specification and therefore we yes. need to have the infrastructure preparedness for that the tata group they, they are now making the the increase in the capacity to to hold this so I would again say that this is the process which have been started and that is why the, the regulatory process has also been modified so as to arrive these vaccines faster. Now there is a bridging history may not be required that okay. long. It will be given to 100 subjects and then yes. see what is happening and then based on the data which you get the vaccine can be rolled out. This will be much faster process. Okay. We certainly hope that the entire process gets expedited because uh, it's a race against time and a race against a virus which is spreading really fast. Let me go back to the politicians for the final comments. Uh, Guru, you have to respond to what, uh, respond to what uh, Ajoy is, was saying. No, see, I humbly and respectfully disagree with the observations made by Dr. Kumar. You see, when the vaccination was being introduced, it was the Congress party, what not they used. Vaccine nationalism, there is an unseemly haste. There was a leader from the opposition party who said it's a BJP ki vaccine, Nakunsa Karne ki vaccine. So I seriously don't understand who are they standing with. It was the Congress rule Chhattisgarh that raised objection to the co-vaccine. It was the Congress rule Punjab that raised uh, opposition to this uh, use of co-vaccine. So I seriously don't understand when Prime Minister gave a call for Tika Utsav, vaccine Utsav, you made fun of it. So this is the time in the history of mankind, it is unprecedented. We have not seen this before. Instead of doing politics, all of us should come together, encourage people to take vaccine. What we saw yesterday, the toolkit which has come, I don't even want to talk about it. But this is not the time to do politics. We must come forward. We okay. have a distribution roadmap. Okay. Ajoy. Okay, so first question on toolkit, they will, their uh, leaders will get an uh, fire because it has been proved repeatedly. Alt news, everybody that the BJP's habit of false and lies and continues. Oh, Guru is, it, so let's not let's leave that. I mean, I'm not. So we will decide that because we know adequately on how it has happened and what is done. We'll not speak on. Second, on 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 what he said on co vaccine was we were objecting to the science. You did that data. When you have data now adequately, you gave approval with phase two data. With the, I, I don't want to embarrass uh, Professor Gupta. Okay, because come, I don't come back to once vaccine, once I, please. I, I, once let's I, let's talk vaccine. about vaccines. Yes. So let me talk yes. to vaccine. So Professor Gupta is a dear friend and a very respected uh, professional. So I don't want to get into what he said, though I'll make a couple of pointers. The first question is on co-vaccine, you didn't have data. We objected when you didn't have data. And any responsible Indian or a scientist will obviously say, uh, instead of saying drink cow urine for co uh, corona or cow gives oxygen when it uh, sleeps, this kind of nonsense only BJP can do. So we were objecting on the scientific part. Third part, when you, uh, uh, Professor Gupta said you extended the period of uh, based on science. Lancet and WHO came on these recommendations in February, sir. So Lancet, and when they came in February, what were we doing in science? By the way, the science said remdesivir doesn't work. And plasma doesn't work, but we didn't bother to guideline the country and everybody went helter skelter and crazy on remdesivir and uh, plasma. There was adequate science across the world saying the plasma therapy doesn't work. But we refused to look at science because this government doesn't believe in science. I'm telling you, Pragya Thakur tells drink urine 
Uh, one chief minister says the virus is also an animal. It's also but, a thing. Uh, Joy, I from have Mela, been Ganga talking to several Ganga medical Ganga. experts, epidemiologists, top doctors, pulmonologists on my show. All of them say they are still trying to understand which is the right treatment. To say that, you know, it's an evolving science. The government is also evolving absolutely. with a changing times. And there that is, is the reason why it. perhaps so Maya, what worked Maya. in the first wave may not be working. So remdesivir, no, one, 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 one moment, one remdesivir, so treatment worked. Plasma therapy one worked. Sec, one it's sec, a different one sec, one mutant. So, so that is the complete. reason why these so therapies so and, and the treatment are being, are being dropped. Though then then yes. when you just when you pick up uh, you pick up Lancet and say you should do 12 weeks science works, then you say remdesivir works for us but it doesn't work for them. This is the most this itself is unscientific. Why can't we do our own studies? That is where we are becoming a laughing stock across it. And please, as not as a politician, as a human being and as an Indian citizen, no science. You do studies on plasma. You do studies on remdesivir. Prove it with data. That is where you know, uh, uh, Maya, even you we all are not asking the right questions. All right. Why is it anecdotal? Ajoy, Why is it we were talking data? about no, vaccines. You have brought in remdesivir and also plasma therapy. No, Only on, on this show I yesterday, on vaccine, I had on top vaccine. pulmonologists and doctors on the show. Okay, so and they said it clearly vaccine, vaccine, that they are still vaccine, trying to understand what me, is the right okay. treatment. So, you know, so every once, hospital once, okay, is so revising their treatment only, okay. and protocols as well. I would like my, to my thank own. the guests on the show. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks. We'll continue this discussion as well. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.